Model Builder is our tool for reusing digital data that you have and creating our models based on that data. So if you already have a CAD file that has your pipes drawn in there and maybe your inlets or your catch basins, your catchments, you can convert those right into modeling elements. This is a list of all the pro um, data source um, types. And basically, you grab your data, you pass it through Model Builder, and voila, all your elements show up. That could be a really fast process, or it could take too long if the data is not in the format that you want. So if you have any say on how that data gets put together, um, this is how the process works. This is an example of the tables that are in your source file. So you have one table for inlets, curb inlets, one for great inlets, one for catch basins. Well, when you bring them into Stormcat, these two will become catch basins. These three will become catch basin. Manholes will be manholes. Culverts are brought in as pipes and pipes as pipes as well, or conduits. If you have different element types, put them in separate tables because otherwise you're going to have to manually separate them or convert some manholes to catch basins or vice versa. So we always like to see a one-to-one -one relationship, right? Here are some examples of what you might have and how you want to bring that. More elements there as well. Okay, and not only can you bring the physical length of your pipes, you can bring other properties if you have that information in your source file. So if you have, for example, a shape file that contains diameter information, mannings, you can map each of those fields and then have that already imported. As you've probably noticed, inputting data is what takes the longest <laughs> when we run these uh, workshops. You don't need to bring every single piece of data that you have. Just bring what you need. And not everything has to come through Model Builder, but it's the, the easiest tool we have. So for example, color coding and things that you may have already in your GIS, we don't need that. We can recreate that in here. You don't need to worry about X and Y coordinates from shape files or cat files they get read automatically and if you have ground data use a different tool that we're going to learn about which is called t-rex okay if you have a spreadsheet or any tabular form that includes pipe bends that's probably rarely the case um, but basically that's not going to come through that's just going to read beginning of the pipe end of the pipe and bring a straight pipe if you have something like this, you'll realize that every time we've drawn a pipe, we've put either a manhole or a catch basin at the beginning and end because it's a requirement. We need to know that. So if you have that in your source file, make sure it is specified that J6 is the end node of P3. If you don't have that, but it's um, in the drawing, we can see that it's within certain distance. You can set a tolerance range and it can make those connections for you. So for any of these problems, Model Builder can create a solution for you. So for example, it can add a node at the end of the pipe if it doesn't find one. It can snap the end of your pipes to a already existing node by specifying that tolerance range. We already looked a little bit at Network Navigator by looking at uh, looking for those flooded nodes. But in addition to that, for um, reviewing the import of your data is wonderful because they can find nodes that are not connected to anything and nodes that maybe should have connected but didn't or maybe something like this, maybe that connection should have been there. So 
it's very useful when trying to clean up the data. That tool can be found in View Network Navigator, and it's very useful to run that after you've run Model Builder. And basically, it can find all those probable sources of error, and then you manually review one by one. So now that you know how we like the data to come, here are some tips. If you have pipes, make sure that you snap all the ends of those pipes to something. And let's make sure they're point features, not lines or polylines. It's important to label your thing, your elements correctly, and most importantly, that they're, they have a unique label. So don't put the same name on two different items. Put manholes and inlets or catch basins in their own feature class or layer if you're using CAD. And if you have data like um, diameters, materials, roughness coefficients, anything that you already have in your database, put it in your shapefile, in your GIS data and bring it. Okay, so that was Moto Builder, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Uh, when we go here to Tools, this is Moto Builder, and it's a simple, simple tool. You go create a new connection, find the type of data that you're going to be using, browse to that data. I don't have one here. And then, after you've browsed to the data, you do a series of steps you go next 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 you don't really do anything <laughs> that's that's for synchronization in the future but then at the end what you do is called mapping and I am going to show you an example of a um, catchment so here's the file you're going to be using tomorrow and I just want to show you what you need to do. So you bring your catchments, which are polygons, and here's the information they have. C coefficient, time of concentration, area, label, etc. You said that it is feet. We're not going to modify any of this. How do you want to import the incoming data? Bring it as to the current scenario or create another um, scenario and the most important thing is this step where we do the mapping so you said okay this shape file contains and you select the element in stormcat so in this case catchments you use the unique identifier and then you map all the fields so see we know it's a catchment Mm. roughness, uh, what do we call that field? Runoff coefficient, rational. TC is time of concentration, so you do that, time of concentration. Um, and that's it. And once you do that, um, if you find yourself updating all the values every six months, every year, uh, you can use snapshot so that at each import you can see what has changed from six months ago when I built my model. And it can tell you, okay, not, uh, in P1 nothing has changed, but in catch basin I2, um, the, the gutter um, length changed or something like that. So it can be very specific with that. And so if you're using that, you would need those. I'm gonna I'm gonna not build that there for a reason. Um, this is always stored there, so I'm not gonna lose any of what I did. But I don't want to miss that file. I'm gonna create a new one, and then I'm gonna run the model builder there. I'm just gonna leave everything the way I had it, and I'm gonna say yes. I would like to build a model now. And it says, okay, we created night catchments. And I'm going to say, where are they? 
and here they are. So rather than me sit, sitting there and doing one by one, you can see that it created them all, and not only that, it brought... Um, okay, I'm in sewer gem, so let me go back here. I should have done this before. Set my calculation options to the correct numerical solver. If you're using sewer gems, you always want to remember to do that, especially when you create a new file. Okay, and basically, you can see the roughness coefficient that was brought in. And I can go here to my flex tables, show you. I'm going to global edit this to rational method. And you get to see that uh, these are all the values imported. And also the time of concentration for each is different. And once you have those elements, you don't want to sit there and one by one input ground elevation, ground elevation. There's a better tool for that, and it's called T-Rex. And this is it. It's just one screen. <laughs> so you select what kind of information you have for topography. So whether it's uh, contour files that came from AutoCAD, Land XML, DTM, etc. Um, I believe this is what we have for the workshop tomorrow. So let's see. Yeah. And I'm going to select elevation and feet. Well, I don't have any nodes, so it's going to give me a problem. But basically, that's all you have to do. Browse to that file, select which of the fields has your Z values. Um, you want to know which units your X and Y coordinates are. In this case, feet. And my elevation would be feet as well. And that's it. That's T-Rex. So let me show you what else T-Rex can do in the presentation. Okay, so we have seen this screen already. We saw what kind of source types we have. DTM files, land XML, DXF uh, points, so like a cloud of points, contours, shape files. Um, well, first thing you want to know is that they are overlapping your model and the terrain file and to do that actually I'll give you a quick tip you can bring it in as a background layer so if I say new background no oh, workshop contours hmm. that should have given me a hint <laughs> all right we're gonna put those in pink bright pink Okay, so let me um, hide that. So you can see the contour map that's going to be imported. So if you're bringing elements that are outside of the scope of that terrain file, it's not going to be able to read them. But the nice thing is that I know it's right on top of my model. So sometimes you bring data and your model ends up like in this area and then the terrain file is not overlapping. So that could be a problem. So as long as I overlap, open T-Rex and import data. All that you're doing with T-Rex is bringing ground elevation for your nodes. If there are nodes that were outside of your terrain model, then you have to enter those by hand. Okay. And that's our presentation on T-Rex and Mono Builder. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.